When it comes to getting historical stock data on your Excel spreadsheet, one of the best options out there is to use the built-in stock history function for Excel. This function is simple to use and provides you with the historical price data that you need for thousands of stocks all across the world. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can effectively use the stock history function in Excel to get the historical price data that you need for many different stocks. And if you stay until the end of this video, I'm also going to be sharing with you how you can get stock financials and key metrics on your Excel spreadsheet. OK, so before we start, I just want to give you a brief overview of the stock history function. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dive right into how you can use this function to get the stock data that you need in your Excel spreadsheet. So in 2020, Microsoft released stocks. Excel stocks, which is a functionality that allows you to get certain stock data as well as some other data for ETFs and mutual funds. So with this, you can get real time and historical price data for stocks and the stock history function is part of that functionality. And basically what it allows you to do, as you will see in a second, is it allows you to retrieve historical stock data and ETF data right on your Excel spreadsheet without having to copy paste it from other sources. With that being said, let me walk you through an example. So the first thing that you need to know about the stock history function is that this function is only available for Office 365 users. If you don't have an Office 365 account, you won't be able to use this function. But don't worry, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you an alternative that works in those cases. So the way the function works is quite simple. You're going to enter equal stock history and this is going to bring up the function and as you can see there's various parameters so first we're starting with the stock or the stock ticker then we have the start date and then the end date the interval and as you can see the options are daily weekly monthly and there's no header show header and then there's the different parameters that you can get from the function so date close open high low volume and here you can just keep getting multiple parameters at the same time so you can see it just keeps expanding and that's basically how the function works so let me uh, walk you through an example step by step so we're gonna get data for apple so in this case the ticker for apple is aapl this is something that you can google and get the ticker and then the start date and this is very important, which is the way in which you format dates. So what I recommend that you do is that you use the date formula. So in this case, you can enter the dates a lot more easier because here it's going to ask you what is the year, the month and the day. So in this case, we're going to enter 2022 as our year. The month is going to be January and then the day is going to be the first. And now we're going to do the same for the end date. And again, it's going to be 2022. In this case, we want to get data from January 1st to January 30th. So the month is going to be the same, but the day is going to change. Close this. And now here we want daily data. And we also want to show the header just so we can see what data we're getting. And as the data that we're going to be getting, we're going to be selecting the open. After that, simply close the bracket and then this should return the data that we're looking for. So as you can see right here, we're going to get the open and we're going to get all the different values uh, in this case for Apple stock for these dates. What we can also do here is to expand this. So let's say we also wanted to include the date. So in this case, we would add zero as the date. And what's going to happen is that now, instead of being one column, you're going to see two columns, one uh, which will be the price right here. And then on the left, you're going to see the dates. So this is going to make it a little bit more clear to see the data that we're looking for. In this case, it's saying the formula spill. That's OK. And as you can see, we got exactly what we wanted. Uh, the only thing is that the date is on the right side and that's because the order in which you select the parameters is the way that the output will be provided to you. So as you can see, now we have the data and the next thing that we're gonna do is to make this function dynamic. So rather than us having to go in the function and change the information, 
we're gonna have the information in specific cells and then once you change the cells all of the data will automatically update for you so here's a template that I set up in this case we're gonna get the same data except it's gonna be in a different way so in this case we're gonna select Apple again as our stock for the started and end date this is the way that I recommend that you do the dates so again you can use the date formula again but what I recommend that you do is that you enter the data in this format so I'm gonna do January and then first comma 2022 and this is gonna be automatically recognized by Excel as date format you can also change it and now I'm gonna do the same for the end date so January 30th 2022 and now you can see that this is in the date format so we have all the information that we need for the stock history function so we're gonna use a function instead of entering the ticker we're gonna select the cell that has that and we're gonna do the same for the other parameters the same so we're gonna select daily we're gonna show the header and in this case we're gonna get the date first and we're gonna get the open close that click enter and as you can see the data will be automatically populated for you you can double click here if this happens you can just simply expand the column so that way you can see the values in this case the dates as you can see we're provided with the data and you can scroll down to see all the values that come back from the function when it comes to getting data from the function across different exchanges here's a guide which is going to be linked in the description and as you can see it provides you with different uh, codes that you can use to access stocks from these exchanges so for example let's say that you're trying to analyze a company in the toronto stock exchange this is uh, the market identifier that you would use or this depending on where the company is listed and this also offers additional information such as the delay of the data and the utc offset so let's say that we want to analyze telus so telus is a canadian company in that case what we're going to do is we're going to enter the market identifier code so xdse and then you're going to enter a column like this and then you're going to enter the company ticker so the company ticker for telus is t if i click enter this is going to be automatically updated to tell us and now we have the data that we're looking for now what i want to do is i want to show you two expert tips that are going to allow you to make your analysis even better so one is going to be making the dates dynamic and the other one is going to be graphing the trend of the data that you're getting so we're going to start with the first in this case what if we wanted to get data supposed to fix dates which is what we have now uh, data for the last 30 days the end date would be today so for that we can use the today function which is going to return today as the date and then for the start date check this out what we could do is today minus 30 so this would return uh, the date from 30 days ago and the cool thing about this is that now the data updates and as you can imagine if i access my spreadsheet the next day and all of a sudden the today function updates to the 17 now the change will be made and the data that you're looking for will update for you with the stock history function one of my favorite things to do is to graph the trend line of the particular stock price of a company so for example what we could do is use the stock history function here and now what we're going to do is we're going to enter the stock we're going to enter the start date so in this case we're going to use the today function and the start is going to be today minus 30 so this is 30 days ago and then today again Make sure you do close the brackets and here what we're going to do is we're going to get the data daily in this case we don't want to show the header so that way we only have the data that matters to us 
without the header that indicates what data we're getting and we're going to look at the close we could also look at the high and the low but in this case the close is what we're going to use now we're going to close this and what's going to happen is we're going to get the data that we're looking for but the problem is it's that it's going to be in this way so what we need to do is this so first we have to go back into the function the headers we selected one we should select zero so that way there is no header if i click enter now we only have the data itself which is perfect and the other thing that we need to do which is more important is to make this data um, instead of being vertical we want it to be horizontal so we could use the transpose function to turn this into horizontal data and there you go now as you can see the data is here horizontally so if we scroll down you can see that it's all here and once you have it in this format it becomes very easy to graph this so if you go on insert line and this is in the spark line section it's going to ask you what is the data range that you're looking for so in this case we're going to select this We're going to select it all, click OK. Now if we go back, you will see that the train line uh, will be done. And we could apply the same thing for the other companies. So we're going to drag this down. And right now there's nothing being graphed because we don't have the data. But if we do grab this and move it down, this is going to generate the data for all the different companies. And there you go. Now we have the data. Now we have the spark lines. And this is making it a lot easier to be able to analyze the companies that we're interested in. The last cool thing that I want to show you with the stock history function is the fact that you can actually graph this data. So the way that you do that is quite simple. You go into the stock history function. So in this case, we have the date open. Let's say that we're going to get uh, a little bit more categories. So in this case, uh, we also want to get the close. We're also going to get the low. Now we can select the data again. Recommend the charts. And then here we can choose this graph, for example. And so this is going to chart the stock price in this case for Talos, we could change it to another company as well and it's going to have the different dates and it's going to show you the open the close and the low if we change this to apple the data will update and as you can see the date the chart will update as well the last thing that I want to show you if, is that if you do want to take your investing game to the next level and your stock analysis to the next level, I highly recommend that you use Y Sheets. And the reason why is because you can get the same data except a lot simpler. Uh, and this works on Excel, this works on Google Sheets, this works on Mac. We have many videos on that on our channel, but I want to show you some of the real value points here. So one of them is that you can just enter a company like Apple select annual quarterly data standardized financials or sec as reported data and then click on get data and what's going to happen is that automatically you're going to get uh, the company's income statement the balance sheet cash flow statement key metrics and growth metrics so if i click out of here now you can see that in this case we're looking at the financial growth but here you can see uh, the income statement the balance sheet, the cash flow statement, etc. And the cool thing is that if you scroll down, if you scroll to the right, you will see that this goes back all the way to 2004. And so the cool thing about White Sheets is that you can retrieve this data. But most importantly, White Sheets has custom functions that allow you to get only the data that you're looking for, as opposed to having to get all the data at once. So if you go to Wise Templates, one of them which you can use is this hyper stock charts uh, template so if you click on this 
this is going to automatically download the template for you if you do see this just click download file and then what you're gonna do is we're gonna open this you're gonna click on enable editing and the template is already built for you so using different formulas so in this case you can see that it's using the wise formula to generate this data in this case we're looking at financials and here there's some more data that's being retrieved uh, from white sheets with that what you can do is just simply change the company ticker so in this case we're going to go from apple from microsoft to apple and all of the data will automatically update for you and so do the graphs so this is a cool way to visualize the metrics of a particular company and the best thing about white sheets is that there's no limits in the sense that you can build any type of model that you like you can build a dcf you can build uh, your own custom screener we have videos on that on our channel and the data is dynamic so rather than having to cop waste time copy pasting the data for every company you analyze you can just change the ticker and get all of the data that matters to you now you know exactly how the stock history function works and how you can use it effectively if you have enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications on so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's going to allow you to take your investing game and performance to the next level i'll see you in the next one